And we're at the brink now where we can stand up in front of the entire world and we can say, shame on you, America. Shame for what you have done to a small group of peace-loving people in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Aloha, my name is Michael Kumukau Ohali. I'm a native Hawaiian cultural practitioner for the ocean, Lapa'au Okikai Olimo. And I'm here today in Maui. And we've just come back from Kihei at Ma'alaya, where the whale sanctuary is. And we've uh, picked up part of our cultural practice, which is very important, our uh, pa'akai, which is Hawaiian salt the evaporated part of seawater and we've gone to the salt marshes and the salt ponds at Ma'alaya where the whale sanctuary is and gathered our Hawaiian cultural practice which is the sea salt that we use in our medicine, in our medicinal practice for kaluing the pig, for lavalo fish. Lavalo is you take it and you put it in tea leaf and you can put luau leaf or seaweed in there and wrap it and you steam it. So lavalu is to steam the fish. And of course we salt and preserve with the Hawaiian salt. Now the interesting thing is you watch the film, you will see us gathering our cultural practice that's afforded to us in Article 12, Section 7 of the state constitution, the highest law of the land. We will not overregulate Hawaiian cultural or religious practices in gathering rights for the subsistence and health of the Hawaiian people. Remember the word, health of the Hawaiian people. How healthy are our Hawaiian people today? Um, remember, 1.2 million people in March 17th, when uh, 17, uh, uh, 1778, when Captain Cook came, 1.2 Hawaiian, million Hawaiian people living in harmony with the land, no mats in navigation bringing anything in, no fuel company, no cars, uh, no electric cell phones or dishwashers or heaters, but a very healthy group of Hawaiian people living in harmony with nature in the uh, uh, system that we call Konehiki. So what happened? I mean, most of our Hawaiian people have diabetes and high blood pressure. Um, look at the kind of food that we eat today. What kind of food we ate with our local ia or fish ponds and salted our fish salted the OPE, salted the limu called uh, pa'akai limu that could last for two years, lipoa and limu kohu. And you have 1.2 million healthy Hawaiian people living in harmony with nature and uh, eating the kalo, the taro, the luau leaves, um, fish from the ocean, uh, mala, uh, sweet potato, bananas, and invertebrates, or pihis, haukiukis, pipiis, um, and basically having a healthy, active lifestyle. And here we are on the salt flats at Ba'alaya in Kihei. And what do we see right next to it? A big old uh, power plant putting out from its smokestack fumes. And in those fumes, you can see the dust particles coming out of the smokestacks blowing in the direction of our kapa'akai, Hawaiian salt. And you can see this as we're gathering the Hawaiian salt. What's the long-term cumulative effects of the heavy metals in that silt that comes through the uh, oil-burning fossil fuel um, power plant for electricity that comes on our kapa'akai our Hawaiian salt. What's the implication of long-term use of, of this going into our salt with heavy metals? And Article 12, Section 7 and 8 of the state constitution, we will not over-regulate or destroy uh, Hawaiian religious or cultural gathering rights and practices for the health of the Hawaiian people. Um, who's doing this study? for the long-term cumulative effects of heavy metals that come from that power plant regularly into our 
pa'akai, our Hawaiian salt, that we use as part of our Hawaiian cultural practice? And why are people allowing it to happen when the law states you're not supposed to do it? And why do we find out that most of the lawsuits dealing with Hawaiian cultural practice, we find out that the state attorney general is always on the side of the developer or the person that is going against the Hawaiian cultural practice. Isn't that kind of strange that the highest law of the land, the state constitution, which mandates the protection of Hawaiian cultural and religious practice, we find the state always going against the Hawaiian cultural practitioner and saying, if you don't like our law, sue us. Go back to your money tree, cash out your stocks and bonds and take us to court because we're backing the developer or we're backing the, the development uh, electric company against you. And I don't remember seeing anywhere in the Constitution any article or section that talked about the developer or business person or um, agent of business or commerce. And yet, the state is always backing them over the religion of the Hawaiian people or the cultural practitioner of Hawaii. Um, this is something that is what we call heva, evil to its core, because you can't have it both ways. Either you mean what you say and you say what you mean and it's not empty talk. We find that we have to um, sue all the time because the state doesn't believe in its own constitution and does not back the Hawaiian. In fact, what we see is things like uh, insects, the sphinx moth that is endemic to Hawaii gets maximum protection. We see the monk seal is given maximum protection as an endangered species. And yet our Hawaiian people, which is probably one of the most endangered species of 7 billion people on the planet, there's only 500,000 of us, um, is afforded no protection even though they say there's protection under the law in Article 12, Section 7 and 8, and even mandates the creation of this, this institution called OHA in Article 12, Section 6. Where is OHA to protect us from all of this? Because OHA is not set up to do the roll commission under the um, state constitution, nor is it mandated to do malama loans, nor is it mandated um, to give away grants, nor is it mandated to raise money. What it is mandated that created it is to protect the Hawaiian cultural practice, religion, and practitioner. When was the last time Oha sued on behalf of the Hawaiian cultural practitioner? Can you remember? Do you ha can you go back that far? 1998, um, they protected me in my Hawaiian cultural practition uh, at uh, EVA against Haseko EVA Inc. at Papipi Road 2007 and 2008. But we're having a problem now in 2012 on getting that protection. We have to ask why. We're in, right now it's um, in April and we're uh, Saturday, April 7, 2012 here in Maui. And why have things changed and swung so far on the other side that um, we're not even afforded the protection so-called of the highest law of the land? Um, there's something really wrong here. This is an election year. Some really big questions are on the table that you need to look at because how can you have a law that you don't implement but you put it the burden on the people that is supposed to be protected who don't have the money and have to go to a state agency that cannot even recognize who you are and is mandated to protect you not to raise money whether it's the Hawaiian Homestead Commission Act that didn't allow the Hawaiian Homestead uh, Board to use its land to build shopping centers that land is supposed to put Hawaiians on homelands, not make money. Why are our Hawaiian uh, uh, supposedly protected agencies in trust for the Hawaiian people trying to make money instead of doing their prime directive, take care of the Hawaiian beneficiary? I think this is like the pollution that is going on in the infusion of something that's supposed to be pure. Our Hawaiian cultural practice is becoming dirty by 
the allowing of what we call progress to happen without any assistance or any help for the Hawaiian cultural pra practitioner or practice. This has to change. Or Kiakua is going to come and change it for everybody by washing everything clear in Maui. Like, you know, in 2012, maybe in November or December, a big flood, tsunami, whatever, to set things straight in action and balance. So let's wake up, Eala E. Let's put it together, folks, and let's do the right thing for the right reason, Malama Pono, so we can set it straight. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your ability to stand up, put some skin in the game, and make it count. Mahalo. My name is Michael Kumu Kau Ohali. I'm a Native Hawaiian cultural practitioner, and please get involved. Do you have an email that they can reach you at? My email is kiakuaskahu at yahoo.com. Mahal. Go, go, drop it what I know, no. Taking my audible time, busting around for the holla ho. So, listen up, my local bro, as I get my point across. Are we living in a paradise on the brink of being lost to the man? Don't you understand? The same man who stole the blacks from their motherland. So, you can take my house, take my car, and try to take my name. But the blood that flows through these days will always be the same. Here is the